Hello YouTube and Bichu. Today I want to talk about family, uh, mother, you know, husbands and wives, the duty of children. Now long ago the Buddha talked about this. I don't know if you know about this discourse. It's it's called the I think it's the the seven wives, the seven types of wives or the four types of wives. Well now I've forgotten. It's a long time um, since I've read it. But anyway, this is seven type four four to seven types of wives four to seven types of husbands right long ago the buddha discussed in depth um, about how to be a good husband how to be a good wife and what what it entails now you can look up that discourse i don't want to talk about it because i encourage people to read the discourses on their own uh, now what i will do is talk about it from i guess uh, uh, my perspective after a few years of practice, and how it's relevant today, uh, in terms of in terms of uh, children and their duties to their mother and father, uh, the Buddha talks about uh, helping the mother and father, particularly in their old age and when they get old. Now, in our societies, it's quite common to send our uh, send parents or grandparents to uh, nursing homes, particularly if they're sick or got dementia or got cancer or terminal illness and uh, we and children tend to defer the care to others. Now this is a complicated situation <clears throat> however in general in, uh, in the terms of uh, Buddhist teaching the Buddhist te Buddha teaches the Buddhist teachings here are very clear. Now I want to talk about a few things about the what I call the kiss your ass Buddhism or the feel-good Buddhism that's out there, and the staunch Buddhism, okay? For example, if we look at how Buddha lived and how the Savaka Arahants lived, the Buddha wasn't playing when, his six years of practice, the Buddha wasn't playing around. We're talking not eating for six months, becoming completely emaciated, right? You know, skeleton, right? Sitting for all day, all night. Uh, outside, no tent, no no nets, no protection from mosquitoes and bugs and snakes. And, and uh, in those days in the jungle, can you imagine in the Himalayan areas and all those areas, there was a lot of wild uh, animals around, elephants, tigers, who knows, snakes. You know, we're talking 2,568 years ago, right? Now, the Buddhist practice, when you look at his life, the Buddha was staunch even before he was the Buddha, right? All the uh, things he developed um, as a prince, all the skills, all the techniques he developed, all the abilities he developed there, it's a long story. The Buddha was not a lazy person. The Buddha was a very astute, disciplined, um, and diligent person even before uh, he became the Buddha, Gautama, right? And even as the Buddha, right, the, the six years leading up to that, his practice was staunch and serious, really serious. This is what people don't understand. I think Buddhism is feel good. It's just fit, you know, say what's good for your feelings and uh, you know, not tell you the truth. That, that's not how it works, right? You don't grow unless you hear the truth about yourself, right? Even the tone, like the a lot of these uh, tone police out there, it's not it's not the message. It's the way you say it. Well, I'm sorry, like. The way you say it, it what doesn't matter. The important thing is the information. The information is what counts, right? Now, of course, in terms of right speech, we, we're talking about uh, not engaging in harsh speech. So, if you're engaging in harsh speech, you know, it's you should we should all we should all improve on that, right? For sure. But in terms of um, saying things as they are, the Buddha made no didn't mince any words he called the fool a fool when a person was behaving like a fool he called them out on it you're behaving like a fool he called devadatta you're, you're nothing more than spittle than spit right he's talking to his cousin when uh, devadatta wanted him to retire because he was old and devadatta wanted to become the head of the sangha and the buddha said you're, you're no better than spit than spittle right so, so the Buddha did, didn't mince words. The Buddha talked straight as it is at the right time. So there's a lot of this feel-good, um, you know, kiss-your-ass Buddhism, um, which I think has been invaded by feminism and, and other 
uh, doctrines and they've come in and tried to tone it, you know, the tone police and tone things down and make everything feel good and, you know, don't ruffle the feathers and just go along to get along kind of thing. Now, look, you come to me, I, I you know, I have to stand my ground. I don't follow that way, okay? And this is why also I also have very, I'm apprehensive to upload on YouTube because I'm not going to censor myself. I'm not going to gag myself. If I want to talk about COVID, the vaccines, um, what's going on in the world, the wars, the genocide in Palestine, for example, um, which really is what it is, right? And uh, all the uh, injustices that it's going on in the world, the, the enslaving of our um, <clears throat> of our countries and things like this. I'm going to say it. and But that also risks uh, YouTube cancelling the channel. So they can cancel the channel and they can cancel it. They're already shadow banned my accounts and things like this, the account here, by repressing the views. And I even received a message regarding that, right? So I've, I'm creating alternatives. Now, in terms of uh, Buddhist.cafe, I've changed things around. If you've had an account on Buddhist.cafe and it was removed, it's because it was idle. Even if it's um, for a month or two, um, I did a, a massive clean of all the accounts, trying to get rid of uh, uh, double accounts and spam accounts and things like this. It's because I removed them because what we need on Buddhist Cafe um, is a change. We need a change of attitude. There's too many people lurking, right? I've sent out many newsletters. I've sent out many communications, uh, uh, tried to contact people even privately, and people aren't even responding or ghosting. So you're joining the site, and you're not even responding. You're not even participating. So that's not helpful to 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 yourself, and that's helpful to 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 me or to the other people that are trying to make the site work because we have an an initiative, right? So I've changed it around, and uh, someone in the comments says, "Oh, it's not very meta." What do you mean it's not very meta? What do you mean by that? What is what is goodwill? Goodwill for myself, goodwill for others. If people join a site and they're lurking and it's and they're not doing anything, it's goodwill for me to kick them out. Let me give you an example. If you were to go, if any person was was to go visit any monastery or temple, and they were not doing the and they decide I'm not going to do my chores, I'm not going to participate in any activity out there uh, in the temple, the abbot after a day or two is going to tell you to leave. It's going to tell you to leave. Is that not meta? Is that what you call not meta? The feel good, kiss your ass, do whatever you want kind of practice? It's not. It's not. If you read the rules of the Sangha, uh, and if you understand Buddhism completely, it's it's actually a very serious, uh, very in your face teaching in a lot of ways, because it's all about removing conceit and pride. How do you remove conceit and pride and ignorance? Okay. How do you remove these three things? at least these three things, with feel good and kiss your ass uh, speech and behavior. You know, when Sariputta said to, was it um, Badali or another, uh, now I'm forgetting, oh boy, am I, I forget a lot of things these days. But anyway, uh, there was a monk who could see the stars on his hand, for example, all the stars in the universe on his hand, right? He went to Sariputta, I can see all the stars of the universe in my hand. Why is it that I have not realized yet? Why is it that uh, Dukkha has not ceased in me? And the, and the Sariputta said, that's because uh, you you have a... Uh, you, well, now I've forgotten the word. Uh, <laughs> pride and conceit, that's right. Um, because you have a lot of conceit. You think you've got something because you've got some type of power. That is stopping you from being humble, stopping you from letting go because you think something of yourself, right? Uh, and you can read that discourse. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an actual discourse. It's a good discourse. You should read that, okay? So, in other words, conceit and pride is not removed. It's not uh, destroyed by feel good, you know, uh, consider your feelings, uh, kiss your ass kind of... Um, <clears throat> kind of speech from teachers and from the monks or from the community at all. In fact, there's rules in the Sangha that tell us uh, if monks are um, behaving in a certain way, we're supposed to tell them in front of everybody, right? 
um, if they've done certain actions, they're to be banished even, banished from the community, told to leave completely and never to come back, right? So that is Buddhism, you know, the real Buddhism in a lot of ways. What we're getting down, what we're getting is a lot of uh, new age uh, mixing and, and uh, conforming. There's a lot of uh, Marxist um, infiltration in Buddhism around the world. It's all about, uh, you know, uh, equality and all these kind of things, which are not part of the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and this is controversial in Buddhism itself, but as far as I'm concerned, equality has nothing to do with the practice at all. But there are monks out there and there are preachers out there who, who preach this kind of doctrine. Now, you know, that's fair enough, but just know it, whether I lose subscribers or not, it's, it's a moot issue. Uh, you have to know if you watch my videos and you watch what I say, if you follow what I do, this is where I stand in it, okay? Uh, myself and the life I've lived um, is, is, is in, in short, when you're stupid and you're not sober you, and you do a lot of things, you think it's okay, follow your heart, you know, do whatever you feel, all that kind of thing. Well, wait till the consequences come around. Well, I've had that. I've had that experience now, right? I've had that experience because I lived, uh, I swallowed the, um, the, the, the bullshit juice, the bullcrap juice. I swallowed that, drank it for a long time. And then when I came across the teaching of the Buddha, the Buddha was very clear. The, monk, the senior monks were very clear. They held me accountable to a lot of things. And this helped me immensely. This helped me get straight. And then I started to hold myself accountable even more and more through uh, the Buddhist guidance and the Buddhist teachings. And now I'm a much stronger person for it. And I, you know, I think this is the way to go, right, for myself. Now, accountability, um, the destruction of the asavas and the kilesa, right, and the defilements, particularly pride and conceit, ignorance. Now, if we look, if we toward, look towards ignorance, uh, if, we, if we are to look at ignorance for a moment, what are the qualities of ignorance? Well, hostility is one of those. Hostility, right? Hostility is one is a is a quality of uh, ignorance. You know, peace is not a quality of ignorance. That's a quality of wisdom, right? Reasoning is a quality of wisdom. It's not a quality of ignorance. Okay, <clears throat> so there are differences out there, and there are particular differences between right and wrong, which not not, not many people even know the difference between right and wrong. Right and wrong. Sama and Micha. Sama and Micha. Right? So I needed to get these things off my chest today to communicate because I haven't done a video for a while. And uh, there's been, you know, every time I make a, a solid move and I cut things, people get upset. Well, I'm, I'm not apologizing for that. Okay? Because the intention uh, of removing idle accounts from the site and things like this. Look, I, I didn't hear from you. We had a whole month of, we, we ran five live discussions a week for a month. We had very little turnout, you know, and we had quite a number of members and no one showed up. What's your excuse for not showing up? Okay, so that tells me that, you know, you, the, the membership is free, the, everything's there, but a lot of members aren't willing to do anything. So I let you go. Now, if you want to rejoin, great. But know that, um, you know, I expect participation, right? And, you know, it's not pleasant when you join someone's site and the person who's created the site contacts you and you just, you shrug them off. You don't talk, you don't answer back. <clears throat> Is that meta on your part, Mr. Your comment, Jay Bowen? When, 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 you were, when you were contacted, I guess, when we sent you messages, did you, did you answer? Did you answer back? Yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like, I'm cool with it. It doesn't matter. But in terms of, you know, people talk about goodwill and, like, for example, compassion. Compassion is a serious thing. It's not, you know, it, it's not a, a feel good thing. Compassion is difficult because compassion is make telling someone the truth, right? Compassion is holding a person accountable at times or or helping them when they're going down, or shaming them when they're behaving badly. That's compassion from a friend to friend, right? These things are hard to do. The Buddhist 
uh, virtues, virtues in itself, I won't say Buddhist virtues, but virtue in itself is hard to develop because you've got to go against ignorance, pride, conceit, and ingrained behavior that we've learned through society, incorrect, ingrained behavior. And there is such a thing as incorrect behavior, right? which people don't want to hear. People don't want to hear it. Oh, I just do what I want, follow my heart. Okay, follow that philosophy and see where, see when you get old where, where you end up. Or try to follow a restrained, right? A restrained livelihood um, and see where that takes you. And you'll see that I believe that one takes you to a better place, right? Particularly, uh, you know, in terms of Buddhism. Now, I'd need to clarify all these things just to make sure that we understand each other here, right? That we understand each other. That I'm a serious practitioner, um, you know, and don't really um, have anything uh, more to say about that. Like, I mean, you know, when when you come to me and, and start asking me questions about certain things, and I answer quite clearly and quite cordially, right? Uh, that's the best I can do. So, but don't expect me to, uh, you know, consider your feelings when we're talking about dharma. Because calm, look for example, calm, the law of karma, right? The law of karma vipaka, right? Action and consequences. The law of karma does not care about your feelings. It does not care about your state of mind. It does not care about, um, uh, you know, whether you're going through a hormonal uh, issue or a, you're sick that day or you're not feeling well or whatever. The law of karma doesn't care. Doesn't care. It it. It's, 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 it's a very brute force um, law in the sense of when you do something, there will be a consequence, right? Okay, like low scale, large scale. Okay, it's like uh, when you murder someone, the police, and you say to the pol police officer, oh, I wasn't feeling well that day, or, uh, oh, you know, uh, oh, you know, please, you know, please don't tell me things I don't want to hear. You're going to be, sl you're going to be slammed up in jail, whether you like it or not. Because that's that's how things work. That's the law of the law of karma is quite brutal in a lot of ways, right? It, it's quite it has what we call upeka equanimity, right? It rewards and punishes across the board uh, in equanimity, right? So, and we're trying to go beyond the law of karma. We're trying to we're talking about trying to cut rebirth. So this is a hard practice in itself, very difficult practice in itself. It's uh. And it requires, at all times, vigilance, diligence, and hearing the truth at all times. Because it's diff when you when you when you hear delusion, it doesn't help you. When you know when you know a good friend uh, won't talk crap to you or lie to you, right? You need to hear the truth in order to grow. You need the real stuff in order to grow, and uh, that's one thing that uh, is missing a lot out there. There's too many feel good, you know, I get offended and all this kind of stuff, all these different philosophies and trying to, and, and trying to uh, engage in, you know, uh, kiss your ass, kiss your ass behavior and, and uh, all this kind of behavior. Humility is different from, is, is a very different thing. It's admitting um, your vulnerabilities. It's admitting, it's also looking at where you're at, where you're at. And humility is is a is a big thing in the practice right humility is the opposite of conceit for example right conceit gets you into a lot of problems pride gets you into a lot of problems ignorance is is the biggest problem we've got now how do you crack ignorance if you tiptoe around it you know you tiptoe around it or pretend oh let's not uh let's not uh you know let's not broach the subject because we want to we're going to say enough to get along, all this kind of thing. You know, what in a self-censor because these stupid platforms uh, don't allow us to talk about things straight. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to follow that road, okay? So I'm creating my own things uh, with pe like-minded people who think in the same way. And if you are like-minded, if you see it my way, please join Buddhist.cafe and start participating. And yes, we need funds as well because everything costs money, right? We need funds. Um, we're doing a lot of work. Um, for A lot of people have done volunteered a lot of work um, and they don't charge and then we're not paying anyone like a, a salary, but we've got to pay for engineers and things like this. 
these things have to be paid for. You know, people want a perfect site. Like, oh, I didn't know how to participate on the site. Why? Why not? What were you missing? You want a perfect site. That's what you want. You want like a Twitter or a Telegram, which costs millions of dollars a year, millions and millions of dollars a year, and they've got professional programmers and everything else um, working on it. We're just not there. I asked you, if you watched any of my previous videos, I said, I said many times, try to be content with what we got. Use what we got and make it work because, it, you know, we're, what we got is where we're at. It's, our, it's where our ability is and where our funding is, okay? So uh, going back to duty with husbands and wives and children in a family, I think this is really important because the morality in our society, the breakdown of the family is a big thing, right? And it's important in Buddhism just as it is uh, anywhere else. It's just that when it's not talked about enough. So the the I guess the most front frontal subject of Buddhism is always meditation um, and uh, you know compassion and metta. But we don't talk about all the other details of the the Buddha talked about how a family for a family to thrive and to live well in the community. Buddha laid down a um, some certain set, sets of uh, suggestions and parameters. And I think it's very interesting that you should read, especially, I think it's is it the four or seven wives, as I said, or the four types of uh, husbands, right? You should read that. If you're a husband or wife, you should read that. If you're divorced or considering getting married, you should read those. And also in the um, <clears throat> Mangala Sutta, the Buddha talks about how we should spend, the Buddha even talks about how to budget, how to, how to budget your money and your finances, right? There's discourses on that too. So <clears throat> the Buddha laid down not only a way of life for lay people uh, to um, have success and prosperity, right? How to have success and prosperity and live well morally, but also laid down um, the rules and laid down the way for monks in order to reach a, excuse me, to <clears throat> realize cessation of dukkha the third noble truth now these teachings are very important if you if you're studying buddhism uh, or at a beginner you should know these things right the buddhist the the teaching of the buddha are all encompassing right they're all there it says that people select even this selective you know I, I, selective hearing and selective reading selective uh selective uh uh, uh how could you say uh a student selecting what he wants to learn and what he does what he doesn't want to learn. Right? <clears throat> it's not how it works. It's not how it works. <clears throat> a good teacher is going to make you get get you to do a lot of things you don't want to do, a lot of things you don't want to do, or you don't understand, or you, you don't see the sense in it. A good teacher is going to throw you into all those in, into all these problems. You know, because we all know that difficulty is a good teacher. <clears throat> 